Acts chapter 8, look at verse number 5. You know the story here. Uh, here, the stoning of Stephen, the end of chapter 7, and uh, Saul was there, of course, uh, consenting to his death. I like what old Maze Jackson said about this. He said they didn't stone Stephen, they just rocked him to sleep. Somebody say amen. I like that, amen. Hey, they just rocked him to sleep. Boy, Philip was a great warrior uh, for God. I mean, a great, really a great man of God. Let's just begin reading with verse number 5. He said, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto those sayings which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and that were lame, were healed and there were great there was great joy in the city but there was a certain man called Simon which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria giving out that himself was some great one well I'll tell you the devil always likes to draw attention to himself to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest saying this man is the great power of God and to him they had regard, because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorcery. But when they believed Philip preaching, boy, aren't you glad preaching works? Yeah. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. Boy, what a miracle. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs, which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid their, uh, they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Notice that phrase. He offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thine heart is not right in the sight of God. Brother Ray, if you don't mind, you lead us in prayer before we preach. Yes. No doubt. Yeah, give us power, Lord, liberty, unction. Oh, my. Sure. Yeah. And thank you, Ray. Randy, if you can turn me up a little bit, I'd appreciate it. I want to preach to you tonight with this thought in mind on thieves of faith. Thieves of faith are things that rob us of our faith. Boy, here we find old Simon the sorcerer. Uh, they came in town. Philip came in town preaching the word of God, Brother Bob. I mean, uh, people were getting saved. And any time God shows up, hey amen, the devil's going to show up as well. Uh, someone said this and said this, if God opens the windows of heaven to bless you, the devil is going to open the gates of hell to bless you. Hey amen. And boy, that's what the devil's going to do. When you start living right, you start living for God, you draw nigh to God, I'm going to tell you the devil's going to try to get you. And I want to say this to you, friend. Really, Christianity today has changed so much, especially when we read in the past, amen, of revivals in the early church. One man said this, the early church was married to poverty, prisons, and persecutions. Today's church is given to prosperity, personality, and popularity. Right. Amen. Well, I'll tell you, a lot of churches today that have the name church uh, on top of them really shouldn't even be called a church. Right. Amen. Boy, it's, it's, it's amazing how these things are. We've come to the place really where a lot of what I call religious institutions, amen, hey, faith has been replaced with money. Wow. Wow. 
Somebody said amen. Yeah. One man said this, Brother Doug, that the church did the most for the world when the church was least like the world. You know what we try to do? We try to, a friend, bring the things of the world inside the church, Brother Aaron. We try to bring them inside the church to mimic the world. And friend, listen, we leave the power of God out of everything. I want to say to you, friend, the power of God cannot be bought. It cannot be bought. Listen, we do not uh, need to allow eternal rewards to be taken away by earthly treasure. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Now, I'm going to say this to you in the introduction of the message. Financial blessings are not always a sign of God's approval. Right. You remember in Revelation chapter 3, that church of Laodicea, Amen. Uh, God did an inspection of every one of those churches there in Asia Minor. He done an inspection, and most of them, amen, he found things wrong. The church of Philadelphia and another couple of churches, he probably said some good things about them, but they, most of them, he had something bad to say in this church at Laodicea. Uh, they said this. They said, because I, God said, thou sayest in verse 17 of Revelation 3, he said, they said that I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing knowest thou not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked amen yeah. now I want to say this they thought they were in good shape because they were loaded down with money, amen. But I'll tell you, the way they looked at themselves and the way God looked at them was two different looks. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, I want to say this. Me and old Donald Trump, we was talking right there before uh, service, amen. I want to say this. Hey, money is not the root of evil. It's not the root of evil. Now, listen, there's people that are wealthy people that God has blessed. I mean, he's been good to them. And Brother Christian, they've been blessed. And they do what's right uh, by the Lord. They give their tithes and they support missions and do work for the church. But I want to say this to you, friend. It's not the money that is the root of all evil. The Bible said in 1 Timothy 6.10 that the love of money is the root of all evil. Amen. Matter of fact, turn to 1 Timothy, if you will. And let's just read a few verses. 1 Timothy chapter number 6. Now, I want to say this, friend, that most of the time money corrupts and changes people and it fills people with pride and arrogancy. You're right. Amen? Amen or not? Yeah. I want to tell you what, friend, I, I was born into a poor family. Uh, we were so poor, we spelled it with five zeros. There was eight kids, amen? I mean, we had one bathroom and it was on the back porch. You had to stand in line to use the bathroom. Had one bathtub and, and friend, amen, you sometimes you had to take baths at different times. That's just the way it was. And let me say this, that people don't go to heaven because they're poor and people don't go to hell because they're rich. Amen. Right. Amen or not? Right. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 6. Look at verse number 6. Paul said this. He said, but godliness... With contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and to many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. While which some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. I want to say to you, friend, you know what money does to people a lot of times? It corrupts people. Right. Y'all right, yes, might as well say amen. Y'all know I'm going to tell the truth. Right. Amen. Money corrupts people. They get a little money, amen, and, uh, you know, they think somehow or another that they're a little bit better than somebody else. They tend to look down their nose, chief, amen, when somebody's wealthy. They tend to look down at their nose and, uh, you know, think, well, uh, because, you know, I've got a little bit of money that, hey, I'm better off than somebody else, amen. I've been preaching funeral for 30 years. I don't say this. I've never seen a U-Haul trailer behind the hearse. I preach rich people's funeral, poor people people's funeral, amen, baby's funeral. One man said this, that life treats everybody different, but death treats everybody the same. Paul said here, Brother Phil, you brought nothing into this world, and it's for certain you can carry nothing out. Amen. 
One man said this, Brother Doug, and I like this. He said the greatest failure in life is being successful in things that really don't even matter. Think about that. I mean, the greatest failure in life is being successful in things that really is not even going to matter in eternity. Right. Hey, Amen. Yeah. Riches corrupt people. Now, I'm going to say this. Riches also make people covet. Yeah. Look at verse 10. He said, For the love of money is the root of all the evil, while which some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Yeah. Hey, people see other people getting rich, amen. Hey, I, I'm not, uh, you know, not a wealthy man, but I've been around a few wealthy people. And I've seen Brother Thad, I've seen some people that uh, were wealth, amen. A lot of them didn't get it honestly. Uh -oh. yeah. Amen. Right. Reading a book one time about a man, said he was a millionaire. Said they asked him, Brother Clint said, Boy, what would make you happy? He said, Another million. <laughs> amen. Money's a good servant, but it's a poor master. When all we live for is money, amen, when all we live for, amen, is money, we're living for the wrong reasons. It'll make you covet. You'll see somebody else, they'll go get a new vehicle and buy a new vehicle, amen. You know what I've learned? Hey, new vehicles have new car payments. Somebody say amen. Hey, the older I get, friend, I'm trying to get out of debt. I don't want no debt on me. I mean, listen, people, you know, they get jealous. If, if you know you see somebody else, uh, maybe get something new, maybe a new house or new clothes or whatever. Hey, people begin to covet. They'll look at you, amen, and uh, try to keep up like they say with the Joneses, amen. Hey, friend, listen, we're all made of the same stuff. We're all made of dust. Listen, the ground's level at Calvary. Hey, God's no respecter of persons, amen. He's going to judge kings. He's going to judge presidents just like he judges you and I, amen. 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 Riches corrupt. Now don't say riches cause people to covet. Now don't say this to your friend. Riches sometimes change people. Right. Y'all sure yeah. ever seen somebody, hey man, that maybe uh, wasn't that well off or, you know, maybe born into a poor family, Jordan, and maybe they climb up the corporate ladder? Boy, they get to the, rise to the very top, and boy, they begin, you know, to make X amount of dollars, and boy, they used to fellowship with you, and boy, used to talk with you, and used to be your friend. But I'll tell you, they get so popular, amen, get to the place, a uh, friend, where they think they're untouchable. They get narcissistic, amen, to think, you know, that they're untouchable, amen. Nobody can't bother them or nobody can't touch them. Now, I'm going to say this. It's sad to say in this day and time, hey, I've seen churches around home, amen. It's almost like when the preacher, some of these mega churches, when they get out of the pulpit, they got the secret service around them. Mm -hmm. wow. yeah. I'm going to tell you, it's a crying shame. They're not accessible to the people. Right. Hey, a pastor, amen, is, is the under-shepherd over the flock that God has put him over, amen. Uh, he's not to walk around and think he's above the people, amen, or better than the people. Right. Amen. amen. Don't say this. I've seen money change people. Sure. Now listen, friend. I'm preaching, listen, I'm preaching to myself tonight. I know they don't take faith in the grocery store. Somebody say amen. Amen. They don't take faith in the grocery store. But I'm saying this, uh, friend, if, if all you live for is the almighty dollar, you're living for the wrong reason. When you die, it's not going to make a hill of beans, amen. Listen, riches change people. That's exactly right. And it's sad when the local church in our day, friend, has become a financial institution instead of a faith institution. Y'all hearing what I'm saying tonight, amen? Now, I believe we ought to be good stewards. I believe that. Uh, I'm like that. I try to be a good steward over what God's blessed me with. But I'll tell you what, uh, friend, we've got 
uh, deacons and people in the churches, amen, trustees, that, hey, all they care about, amen, is the bottom line. All they care about is money, amen. Hey, friend, whatever happened, just trust in God. Whatever happened, just to trust the Lord and have faith, amen, and just believe God's going to meet the need. He said in Philippians 4, 19, Paul said, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus, amen. God's been good to us, friend. He's blessed us, but we don't need to leave God out. Now, I want to say this to you, friend, that the church is not a bank. Are y'all hearing me, amen? The church is not a bank. I had a fellow one time, Brother Doug, there at the church. He come to me and he said, Preacher, he said, can the church loan me some money? <laughs> I said, no, the church is not a bank. Right. We're not in the loaning business. Right. We don't loan money. You know what we did? We gave him a love offering. We gave him a love offering. Amen. We didn't, we didn't give him no loan and make him sign a, a you know, a thick a bunch of folder of papers. Amen. Like a lawyer going to have to pay him back. Amen. Now, I want to say this to you, friend. We've got the place, I'm afraid, in our churches. Amen. In a lot of churches that we replace faith. Amen. With what money can do. Amen. Now, I want to say this to you that Philip started out with Stephen. Philip had a good example, amen. Matter of fact, he was the first deacon that was selected in Acts chapter 6, but it was also appears that he was a preacher of the gospel. Now, I want to say this. The Bible said that Stephen was a man full of faith and full of the Holy Ghost. Well, that's what we need. We need men today in our pulpits, amen, Brother Bob, Brother Doug. We need men chief in our pulpits that are full of faith, that are full of power, amen, that are full of the Holy Ghost, that they have a backbone like a saw log, that they'll get up and preach what thus saith the Lord, regardless of what anybody says or thinks, amen. Preachers don't need to pander to people. We don't need to try to please people. Jesus didn't, amen. Hey, the most trouble he had with people was religious people. Pharisees and Sadducees. Amen. We don't need to try to uh, try to uh, you know please people. Amen. We need to try to please God. Amen. Now I'll say this: Philip is mentioned with Stephen. It was probably likely of the same caliber of a man that that uh, Stephen was. One man said the character of a man is more important than his status in life. Amen. Amen. Character is more important. One man said this, reputation is what you are in front of others. Character is what you are when you're all by yourself. Amen. 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 Now, I want you to notice this. Boy, the Holy Ghost showed me this right here, Brother Phil. I want you to notice how easy it is, Brother Doug, back in our text in Acts 8. Notice how easy it is to confuse the power of God. Now, boy, we're, we're living in a day that we've got a lot of religious magicians. Are you hearing me, amen? We've got a lot of preachers, amen, in the pulpits. Hey, they can get up. Some can sing good. They've been blessed. Got a talent. They can sing. Hey, they can get up and friend just uh, tell a few stories and having the congregation cry. Amen. Like chicken feet eating. They'll have the congregation eating right out of their hand. Amen. Amen or not? Don't you notice this? I have too, brother. Look at that. Look at what the Bible said in verse 10 of Acts 8. He said, To whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. It's real easy to confuse if you're not... Uh, if you're not living close to God and you don't have a spirit of discernment, amen, it's real easy to get confused, amen, between a true man of God, amen, or a wolf in sheep's clothing. Amen. I mean, I've seen preachers I thought were great preachers and some evangelists, amen. Hey, when it gets down to it, you know what they're in it for? They're in it, amen, for the love of money and filthy lucre. I've seen it, amen. And I'm sure, I'm sure some of you have seen it, amen, it down, down through life. Now I want to say this, the world today really doesn't understand the power of God. You know why? 
You know what the world understands? The world, they understand entertainment. They, when they go to these big churches and these mega churches, amen, hey, they get up and they got screens everywhere and they got black lights and smoke, a fog coming from the platforms and somebody get up, they'll do something 10 or 15 minutes, amen. Hey, the world, they, under, they like to be entertained. One man said the church is not a cruise ship, it's a lifeboat. You go on a cruise to get entertained, you get in a lifeboat to get saved, amen. <laughs> We don't come to church for entertainment. Thank God, amen, for good music and thank God for talent inside the church. But I want to tell you, the church is a place where we come inside to worship God in spirit and in truth, amen. That's right. The power of God cannot be purchased. It comes through prayer and self-denial. Paul said in Galatians 2.20, he said, I am crucified with Christ Nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. You can't live, brother, feel the Christian life without Christ. I've seen, I've seen people fake it. I've seen people, brother Doug, amen, put on a false facade. They fake it, Amen. I had one preacher one time when I was going through depression. Uh, he called me and talked to me, Brother Chief. And he said, boy, you need to fake it till you can make it. I said, I'd never make it in Hollywood. I'm not a good actor. Right. Yeah. Right. True. If something bothering me, amen, you're going to know it. <laughs> hey, something bothering me, my wife's going to know it. Somebody say amen. amen. Something going on at the church, if something bothers me, hey, the church is going to know it. Yeah. Amen. 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 I'll tell you, we got a bunch of phony balonies, amen, in our churches today. And I want to say this to you, friend. Listen, we see a successful man, and we automatically assume he's blessed by the Lord. Amen. And I want to say this. The judgment seat of Christ will not remember nor show how successful we were or are in this world. Somebody say, oh man, they've got a lot of money. It ain't going to do them one bit of good in heaven. The cheapest thing in heaven's gold and the streets are going to be paved with it. One man said down here, people worship gold and walk on God. Hey, when we get to heaven, we're going to worship God and walk on gold. Somebody say amen. Amen or not? Only what will be done for the Lord Jesus Christ will last for eternity. Brother Doug, I was sitting in a study one day and the Holy Ghost told me this. Boy, I like it when he gives you a word. Uh, right, amen, just the Holy Ghost speaks to you. He said this to me, Brother Jordan. He said in heaven, people's fortunes will become their misfortune. Oh, that. That. <laughs> amen. Amen. For the Kevin people's fortunes will be their misfortunes. I mean, I, I love our church down home. I love our church. Thank God for them. Amen. Hey, I try to preach on soul winning. And I try to be a soul winner. I'd go, uh, try to go every Saturday morning, go out on visitation, trying to, uh, trying to win somebody to God or get somebody back in church. But I'm going to tell you what, friend. Hey, you can't get nobody interested in trying to reach somebody for God. You know why? Because we're too busy. Yeah, you're right. right. Somebody done an acrostic on the word busy, buried under Satan's yoke. We're busy, we're busy, we're busy, amen. Hey, we don't have time for the things of God. We don't have time, amen, for revival. I mean, listen, a lot of times, Brother Doug knows this, being a pastor, hey, you announce revival, and the first thing people do, they'll start coming to you, amen, and start giving excuses. There's no, there's no right time to ever have revival. You just have to pray as a pastor and try to uh, do it the best way you know how, and who's going to come, going to come. They're going to put their feet around the table and try to get help. Somebody say amen. I'll say this. We have allowed the world to dictate to the church what we deem as spiritual success. One man said this, the church's success is not based on how many it seats, but how many it sins. <laughs> 
Amen. 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 We think, you know, because the church has seats thousands and thousands, amen, multitudes are sitting there. But I want to tell you what, thank God for that, every person's a soul. But I want to say this, friend, God's interested in missions. Thank God you've got a mission-minded church. You've got a mission-minded pastor. I've seen him several times when I've been up here, amen. I mean, it, it just astounds me sometimes. I've seen him get up here and just take on a couple of missionaries. He said, I believe we'll just take them on. The church vote and just take them on. We done that not too long ago, amen. In our church, you know, we, they just look kind of funny. We don't operate like that. But we had a missionary in there. And boy, I mean, had a touch of God on him, Brother Thad, Brother Bob. I mean, got up and uh, got, had a touch of God on him. And the Holy Ghost said, take him on right now. Amen. Boy, we need to be sensitive to the, ho the voice of the Holy Ghost, amen. Now, after these apostles in Jerusalem heard about the revival they sent Peter and John down to Samaria to check things out and boy when they arrived it was apparent that the power of God was on their lives Simon was a new believer the Bible said he got saved look at that. verse number 13 then Simon himself believed also and when he was baptized he continued with Philip and wondered beholding the miracles and signs which were done amen boy ain't that a blessing now I want to say this, wanting the power of God is a good thing and it's a godly desire, but many Christians today, they want the power of God, but they want to take a shortcut to receive it. We don't want to sacrifice. Amen. We don't want to humble ourselves. We don't want to in Matthew 6, put the time in the prayer closet, amen, and get shut up with God. We don't want to get along, amen. Hey, we want to come in and we want boy, the power of God to fall. And Hey, we want to live like the world six days a week. Then come to church on Sunday, Brother Michael. Amen. And come to the house of God filled on Sunday. And we expect God to show up. I'm going to tell you, friend, it's not going to work like that, amen. That's good. Yeah. I want to say this to you, friend. That God is more, amen, he's more excited and he's more interested in your holiness than he is your happiness. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> amen. God is more interested in your holiness than he is your happiness. Be ye holy for I am holy. He's a holy God. One man said Satan's detours always lead to a dead end. The devil always wants you to take a shortcut in the flesh. We're not willing, amen, to put in the time and sacrifice what it takes, amen, to have the touch of God on our life. Now I want to say this to you, friend. These thieves of faith are robbing us, amen. A lot of Christians are lacking faith. You know why? Because they won't spend time with God. Amen. Many today are living for a, a paycheck but they'll be bankrupt in heaven when God said his payday. Wow. Wow. 2 Corinthians 5.10 For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that we may receive the things done in our body according to that which we've done whether it be good or bad. Yep. Think about that, friend. Yep. I'm going to tell you, the older I get, Brother Thad, and the closer Brother Doug I get to the grave, I'm going to tell you, that, that thing weighs on me about the judgment. I'm telling you, it weighs on me, Brother Eddie. It, weigh, it, weigh, it weighs on me. Amen? When you think about those uh, idle thoughts and those things, amen, that goes through our mind and things, you know, uh, friend, you say, well, people never see them. I'm going to say this. Hey, God's got every hair on our head numbered. He knows every time, amen, we get upset, we get mad, if we got pride or jealousy, amen, in our heart or strife, amen, or uh, envy or we gossip about somebody. I'm going to tell you, God knows every bit of that, friend. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. I want to say this to you, friend. As a result, Christians today de depend on many other things and that give the appearance of the power of God in their lives, but their lives are empty. Amen. Amen. The Bible said in Romans 14, 23, For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Right. Hebrews 11, 6, But without faith it is impossible to please him. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, Paul said, For we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Right. Amen. Many of God's people today, 
Beloved, we're living by sight and not walking by faith. That's good. Amen. Amen. What does my heart good? You come into church back here. I never forget the first time I preached up here. Brother Doug was talking about our friendship. And son, this uh, building wasn't here and had the little old building out there with the fellowship hall now. Had the old-fashioned day and preached down there behind that little old pulpit down there. Hey, just a handful of people. But I'm going to tell you, look how God's blessed you, amen. Hey, God's blessed you and you've trusted God, trusted the unseen hand, amen. Hey, God's blessed you with a beautiful building. Thank God your pastor has a vision, amen. Hey, where there is no vision, the people perish. Thank God he's got a vision, amen. But listen, friend, you trusted God by faith back then. Now I want to say to you, keep on trusting Him by faith. Amen. Keep on trusting Him, amen. One man said this, and I like this, I wrote this down. Romans 6, 23, he said, the wages of sin is death. He said, you better quit before payday comes. Faith is not just believing God can, but believing that God will do what he has promised. Hey. Amen. Amen. That's what faith is. Now listen, every Christian, not just preachers, need to be careful. We can rob ourselves of the faith that is needed in our daily lives. Amen. To have victory for the glory of God. Hey. Amen. Amen. A lot of things will rob us, amen, of faith. Now, I want to say, number one, I want to say this to you, friend. The first thing that will rob you, a thief of faith, is your flesh. Yeah. Yeah, amen. Does anybody here in the church tonight have any trouble with the flesh? Am I the only one, amen? No. You can spell the word self inside the word flesh. I don't have trouble with Doug Foster. I don't have trouble, amen, uh, with Chief or Clint. You know who I have trouble with? The fellow, amen, that I shave every morning. Yeah. Yeah. That's why Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 31, he said, I die daily. Yeah. Lester Roloff always said this. He said, I get up every morning and have a funeral. <laughs> die out to yourself, amen. Now, I'm going to tell you, friend, the flesh will rob you of faith. Turn to Galatians chapter 5. Look at this. Galatians chapter number 5. Amen. Let's read a few verses here tonight. Galatians chapter 5. I love the book of Galatians. Look at verse 16. Paul said, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But, look at that conjunction. If you be led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are these. There's 17 things he's getting ready to list here. Which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. These are sexual sins. In verse 20, he begins to list spiritual sins. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, and heresy. Then in verse 21, he begins to list social sins, envying, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Look at verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit, I like these, ninefold fruit of the Spirit. He said love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against, there, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Amen. You know what Paul said, Brother Bob, here? He said we need to walk in the Spirit. It's a daily thing, Brother Doug, that we have to do is to walk in the Spirit. I don't say to you, you already know this, this flesh is not saved. <laughs> Boy, the flesh, amen, the flesh don't like to walk in the Spirit. Hey, the flesh wants to do the things the flesh enjoys doing. 
That's why, amen, when it comes on Sunday morning, man, I just don't feel like going to church. Yeah. I'm give out, amen. I'm tired. Yeah. Hey, you get up on Monday morning or get fired. Somebody say amen. amen. One, man, one man said this. He said, listen, he said there'll be uh, Christians, amen, those unfaithful Christians, they'll call in sick, but faithful Christians will crawl in sick. Amen. Good. Amen. But the fruit of the Spirit, you've got to walk in the Spirit, friend. And listen, you're not going to walk in the Spirit hanging around the devil. Right. Not going to walk in the Spirit staying away from the Word of God. Right. You're not going to walk in the Spirit staying away from the church. Amen. Amen. One man said this. I love this. Y'all know I like these sayings. He said, the fruit of the Spirit does not grow well in the garden of disobedience. Right. <laughs> Amen or not? The fruit of the Spirit does not grow well in the garden of disobedience. Amen? People say, I love God, but they don't keep His commandments. You know what Jesus said, Brother Doug? You know it well. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. His commandments are not grievous. Hey, if you love God, you won't mind doing what the Bible says. Your preacher gets up, amen. He rears back Brother Bob and preaches, Brother Christian. And he tells it like it is. Hey, if it cuts your flesh, you'll say, I'm guilty. And you'll get in an old-fashioned altar and get right with God. The flesh will rob us. Walk in the Spirit. Then, uh, listen, the second thing we have to do, we're going to have to deny the flesh. He said, verse 17 of Galatians 5, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. Right. Hey, Amen. Right. Hey friend, when you get saved, the Holy Spirit comes up and takes residence, but a lot of times he's not president of our life. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> good. Amen. Yeah. Hey, we want him to be Savior, but we won't make him Lord. Amen. One man said this, you cannot receive what Jesus gives without accepting who he is. Good. Good. Amen. 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 We don't make him Lord. He's already Lord. Amen. He owns that title, friend. Amen. He's already Lord. Right. He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Sure. He already has that title. Walk in the Spirit. Don't say this. You're going to have to deny the flesh. You're going to have to crucify the flesh. Amen. Right. Amen. I tell you what, I have trouble with this flesh. I'll be honest with you. Right. I have trouble. I have trouble my flesh. I mean, listen, friend, it just seems like if it ain't one thing, it's something else. Right. You try to live God. One missionary said you can always tell when you're in the will of God because it's always uphill. <laughs> Is that right? You try to live for God, Miss Norman, try to do right. Hey, it's always uphill business. It's a struggle. Sure. You know why? Because the flesh is not saved. Right. Right. Boy, ain't it going to be a blessing one of these days we get released from these bodies? Right. Well, I thought about that, Doug, while y'all were singing a while ago. Son, I thought, I said, boy, I wish I could just get up and holler and scream, amen. I mean, just have a Holy Ghost fit. Somebody say amen. Sure. I'll tell you, ain't it going to be a blessing when we get unchanged from these bodies? Yeah. But we get a glorified body, Philippians 3, verses 20 and 21. He's going to change these vile bodies under like his glorious body. Amen. Hey, we'll be able to praise him throughout all eternity. We won't never get tired. We won't never have to take any more medicine. Amen. Hey, we won't have to have false teeth and hearing aids and glasses. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> Takes about 30 minutes to get up, putting things on and in. Somebody say amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen or not? Yeah. Hey, if you're young, you better enjoy it, friends. All I can tell you. My wife was talking about not too long ago. She said, Boy, I wish I felt like I did when I was 45. I said, Baby, them days are over. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen or not? And I'm glad one of these days, Brother Bob, I'm glad we're going to get a new body. Yeah. Well, it keeps me going. Titus 2.13, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, one of these days, amen, we won't have to get out of bed no more. There'll be no more night there. We won't be restricted or be limited by these bodies. Thank God we'll be able to praise Him, amen, with perfection. Hallelujah. Amen. 
walk in the Spirit, deny the flesh. Look at verse 18. We need to be led of the Spirit. He said, but if you're led of the Spirit, you're not under the law. Boy, you need to be led of the Spirit. You'll never be led of the Spirit, amen, by not reading your Bible. How does God speak to us? He speaks, uh, speaks to us through His Word and through His Spirit. Right. If you're not in the Word of God, He's not going to speak to you, amen. Right. And listen, if you're not in the Word of God, you're, gonna, you're not going to listen to Him the way you ought to listen to Him. Right. Well, I'm going to say this to you, and I know you've, you've had this happen to you. I've got some bad advice before from people. The Holy Ghost, Doug said it uh, last night, hey, the Holy Ghost will never lie to you. Titus chapter 1, verse number 2, that's one thing, brother, he can't do. He cannot lie. <laughs> I've had people, they man, tell me just bald face lies. I mean, it's sad. I mean, they'll stand, sit there and tell you in church, amen, stand and just tell you bald face lies. <laughs> My daddy always told me this. He said, Christian, if somebody lied to you, they'll steal from you. Just tell the truth. Mark Twain said, if you tell the truth, you don't have to remember nothing. Just, just be honest. Hey, the truth's not going to change. Amen. Psalms 119, verse 89. Forever, O Lord, is thy word settled in heaven. Hey, it's never going to change, friend. Your flesh cannot produce the power of God. Amen. I mean, listen. Hey, you can go fishing all day long and enjoy fishing 8, 10, 12 hours. I mean, you can go to a ball game. I've seen them go to ball games, amen, down home. Hey, they go all day long, friend. They'll get there at 8 o'clock in the morning, pop them tents out, get the coolers out, sit there all day long. I mean, they be a thunderstorm or a hailstorm come through. Hey, they'll sit there and pray for overtime. Church goes 15 minutes too long, amen, they'll start griping. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying, amen? Start right. having revival, and the preacher said, well, boy, we're going to go another week. Oh, I wish he hadn't said that. <laughs> amen or not? Yeah. Hey, this flesh, the flesh is not saved. The flesh enjoys carnal things and worldly things, amen. We don't like to entertain, amen, spiritual things. You know why? Because the flesh is not saved. Right. Amen? Amen? Walk in the Spirit, deny the flesh, be led of the Spirit. Then notice what Paul said in verse number 25 of Galatians 5. He said, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Boy, we need to live in the Spirit. Hey, the Spirit lives in us, Brother Bob, Brother Doug, and we need to live in the Spirit. Hey, I'll be honest with you, I like to enjoy the good things of God. I do, I like to get around somebody that loves God. I like to get around somebody, amen. I mean, last night that service was a blessing. Yeah. Sunday night it was a blessing. Yeah. I mean, I like it when you can't wait to come to church. Yeah. My wife gets on me all the time. She told me last night, we drove up in the parking lot. She said, I guarantee you we're the first ones here. <laughs> right. Right. Hey, I'm not going to be late, friend. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, Dr. Seidler always said this. He said, listen, if you're on time for church, you're 30 minutes late. Amen, a great man of God. I mean, enjoy being around. I like to come in and hear these guys up here playing. Amen, I mean, just having a good time. Doug just preached in our camp meeting. God used him greatly down there in the camp meeting. Every night, old brother Jimmy Anthony, the moderator, he'd get up every night about 15 or 20 minutes before church out there in that tabernacle. He'd start playing the guitar and start singing. Hey, you know what he's doing? We was getting warmed up, amen. Amen. I like it when people come to church, get here about 20 minutes early. Brother Doug just takes prayer and starts praying, amen. Amen or not? Live in the Spirit. Boy, the flesh is a thing, beloved, that will rob us of our faith. It will rob us. Let me give this to you, and I'm, I'm almost through here. Let me give this to you, old brother Brian Lawson. I love him. Boy, good man of God. And he, he told me this about a, a pastor uh, in Washington, near Washington, D.C. His name is Chad Wells, independent Baptist preacher, and said he wanted to give President Donald Trump a gospel track and tell him that he was praying for him. Said he started praying and begging God to allow him the opportunity to witness to the president. 
And also, Pastor Wells wrote a gospel tract that was specifically for the president as well as some other politicians. Said many Christians laughed at him, and some of his friends told him, said, you'll never get near the president. Said within a month of praying, he was invited to the Capitol building. He gave gospel tracts to many politicians and generals walking those halls that he'd been praying for, including the Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan. Said at the end of the presidential speech to Congress that day, he was detained as preacher by the FBI when he tried to leave the Capitol building. They took the man and his friend downstairs where they stood for 15 or 20 minutes. Said after that time, President Trump entered the hallway. He was shocked, but he had the opportunity to shake hands with the president and give him the gospel track that he wrote for him. That's having faith. That's putting, that's putting legs on your prayers. Somebody say amen. See, what our problem is, amen, is we don't believe God enough. The Bible said what's impossible with man is possible with God. We limit God because of our lack of faith. Amen or not? The flesh will limit you, amen. I've already talked about how finances will limit you. One man said when we focus, when our only focus is in on, on money, then, amen, the, the, on, the, on money, you will receive the things that money can buy. Yes. Amen. Matthew 6, 24, No man can serve two masters, for either he'll hate the one and love the other, or else he'll hold the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Right. Amen. Well, another man said this, for you to love God more, you got to love something else less. Right. Right. Amen. Good. <laughs> Good. Amen. Good. Brother Ray, Brother Jordan, for us to love God more, we've got to be willing to love something else less. Good. Good. Amen. Good. Boy, God help us, amen, to get to focus our attention on God. Paul said in Colossians 3, Set your affections on things above, not on things of the earth. Right. Too many of us have our heart planted deep in this earth and our roots planted in uh, things and ambitions and jobs and everything else. And when those things fall through, we're devastated. Yeah, you're right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Been there and done that, friend. Yeah. Thieves of faith. Our flesh, our finances, amen. And let me say this to you, friend. One man said this, mustard seed faith can remove mountains, but it takes daily bread to live the Christian life. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Good. amen. Yeah. If you're going to live for God and you're going to be a successful Christian, you've got to have daily bread. You've got to have time, Brother Thad, with God. You've got to have time spent alone with God. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you, the older I get, I don't know about you, but the older I get, I like quiet time. Yeah, amen. My wife gets on me. She said, you just sit around in the house sometime with all the lights off. Miss Ned, I can always tell when I come home when my wife's there, every light in the house is on, amen. <laughs> I, can just, I can just see that meter out there, boy, it's just spinning, amen. I told her, I said, you don't have to cut home with one light, amen. I'll tell you, you get older, you, you know, you like things a little quieter. Somebody say Amen. amen. I'll tell you, I wonder what's robbing you of your faith tonight. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.